What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who were mortal enemies, but now are friends, man. Sometimes this happens uh, in the wrestling biz. Uh, everyone's trying to be at the top of the card, everyone's trying to uh, prove themselves and, you know, make the most money as possible. So, you have wrestlers that have issues with each other to the point where they literally don't like each other and, and are willing to throw hands in the back you know legitimate uh fights between wrestlers because they don't like each other but as time goes by they're able to let bygones be bygones and actually be pretty cool with each other and in in my opinion i think it's just a beautiful thing to see people that weren't cool be able to actually put aside their differences and actually you know be able to coexist around each other and actually be friends man life is short we say it all the time but you don't want to have grudges and hold on to that hatred for someone if you have an opportunity to let that hatred and disdain uh go away try to you know try to reach that point man so we're gonna check this out see which wrestlers became actually pretty cool with each other in the end appreciate all the love and support almost at 100k we're almost there let's do the damn thing but when you're a pro wrestler, you're not going to get along with everyone in the locker room. Facts. Therefore, it's only natural that certain wrestlers become enemies over time and grow to resent each other. This bad blood can spill over to either verbal or physical confrontations, which highlights just how much wrestlers can end up despising oh, one or more that of their was, peers. That was an interesting However, segment right there. However, time heals old wounds, as a number of wrestlers who have previously felt resentment towards each other have managed mm -hmm. to patch things up and actually become close friends. But which ones are they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestling mortal enemies that eventually became best friends. Shout out to WrestleMania, go subscribe to him, link to the original video down below, as always. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Chris Jericho and Goldberg. Mm. And the issues between Jericho and Goldberg began when both men were in WCW. There were plans in place for WCW to execute a few between the two stars, but this was an idea that Goldberg nixed. Goldberg was of the belief that Jericho wasn't at his level and that Jericho was virtually a novelty lower card act. Oh, wow. The backwards attitude continued when Goldberg signed with WWE in 2003. The two would get into a physical confrontation backstage after Goldberg was once again bad mouthing Jericho. Jericho was said to have got the better of the exchange and the two would proceed to work together in the summer 2023. But fast forward to 2020 and the two have patched things up and are on great terms. Jericho has even stated that he's got nothing but love for Goldberg and that Goldberg has appeared on Jericho's Talk is Jericho podcast. That's pretty cool, Number man. Nine, that is pretty cool. They were able to actually hash that out and, you know, let bygones be got bygones. I love seeing these type of videos, man. Well, like, well, yeah, these type of videos and just hearing these scenarios of people just putting that, you know, bearing the hatchet. Flair and Mick Foley. Didn't even know they had Flair a beef with each Foley's other. Foley's blood feud began in the 1990s when Foley was openly critical of Flair in his autobiography. The feud would then be furthered a number of years later when Flair would label Foley as a glorified stuntman. Oh. WWE would smartly play into this into their real life feud in 2006 when the two engaged in a brutal hardcore feud culminating in a match at the Summer I Slam remember that. Feud. Thankfully, the two legends of wrestling are now friends, and Foley would discuss his friendship with Flair during a 2019 Inside the Ropes event. As Foley stated, Rick and I have a pretty good friendship, actually. Been a little rocky road. There are some touching things. I even said when I was a guest of Charlotte's, you know, Rick wasn't allowed to fly after he had a near-death experience. So Charlotte invited me and my daughter to the New York premiere of Rick's 30 for 30 on ESPN. I was asked something similar about my relationship and I said the funny thing is if we ever just had a short book consisting of just our text messages it would surprise people. Some of the touching exchanges we've had over the years. Damn, that's pretty Number cool. Eight, Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. Oh, when Randy Orton. I did not know they didn't like each other. I know Matt Riddle definitely uh, has some people he's rubbed the wrong way in the back, <laughs> but I didn't know they had issues with each other. Did not First know met Matt Riddle, they didn't exactly get off on the best of starts. Orton found Riddle's demeanor rude and unprofessional, and this quickly grew into a hatred for the man himself. Orton would even take a number of shots at Riddle via social media and during interviews, but this will all change when the two began to work together in 2021. 
The two would become RK Bro, and the tag team combination became insanely popular with fans. Mm, this is very One true. One slowly but surely grew to love Riddle's work, and before fans knew it, the two were incredibly close behind the scenes. Number seven, wow, did JBL know that. and the Blue Meanie. Now this I do know. This was actually a real, real uh, situation, but I'm go I didn't know if they ever resolved it, but it seems like they have. In 2005, the One Night Stand pay-per-view was designed to be a celebration of the success of ECW. Mm -hmm. However, what fans mostly remember about the show is JBL decided to legitimately shoot on the Blue Meanie. This would take place during a brawl between the ECW and WWE rosters. JBL would begin to assault Meanie with stiff punches and Meanie would be covered in blood. JBL wanted revenge because Meanie made some negative comments about him online, but was this really the right way to approach it? Well, absolutely not, yeah. as JBL's actions were condemned by everyone, including WWE management, and it just highlighted how problematic of a human being JBL was during this time. In a bizarre turn of events, though, the two are actually now close friends and have put their prior animosity behind them. The wow. two often plug each other's personal ventures via social media, and Meanie has even made a guest appearance on JBL's podcast. Number 6, Triple That's H and cool. Chris Jericho Now, the rivalry between Triple H and Chris Jericho was a standout of the early 2000s. The two would feud in 2000 and once again in 2002, and they would even main event WrestleMania 18. Mm -hmm. But during this time, the game and Jericho did not like each other in any capacity. I didn't know that. The issues between the two stemmed from when Jericho was working with China in 1999. At the time, China was dating Triple H, and there were claims that Jericho was being overly stiff with the ninth wonder of the world. Uh... Although the two didn't like each other, they always stayed totally professional and would have some classic matches against each other. And that's the, the two... crazy thing about this whole situation. They had many of matches and feuds and they just stay professional and they didn't even like each other that's how you really supposed to do it to be honest with you like yeah i don't like you but we we're trying to we're trying to build some money right now so i'll tolerate you for this moment but we're trying to build some money and they put on some pretty good matches against each other that's insane you currently are good friends and have put any bad blood behind them Jericho has even spoken at length in relation to the respect he has for the game, and this will likely be a key factor if Jericho ever decides to return to WWE for mm -hmm. one final run. Number 5, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. I did. During the 90s, Shawn Michaels was... Yeah, Shawn, I did hear he's had some run-ins with The Undertaker. I believe there was one situation, I think, The Undertaker was like kind of threatening Shawn, because... I don't think HBK at the time, I don't think he wanted to lay down for uh, Stone Cold yet. <clears throat> he didn't want to lay down. For, he didn't want to lay down and put him over. And I think it, there are reports that were saying uh, The Undertaker was like, yo, if you don't lay down, if you try to screw him out of this or whatnot, you have to deal with me when we get to the back. So I don't know how true that is. Let me know down below if you guys know what I'm talking about there. But I have heard. Just, you know, little run-ins between The Undertaker and HBK. Exactly the most liked human being in the world. HBK had a ton of demons that resulted in him having a poor attitude to virtually everyone up and down the roster. And one of the people HBK made an enemy out of during this time was The Undertaker. The dead man was the locker room leader, so to make an enemy out of him wasn't the best move for Mr. WrestleMania. The Undertaker <laughs> disliked HBK so much that during an episode of WWE Untold, the dead man would claim that he wouldn't have pissed on HBK if he was on fire. Damn! When Michaels returned to WWE in 2002 with a reformed character, the relationship between the two men would slowly but rebuild. And this would be seen when the two collided in an all-time classic, classic at WrestleMania match, 25. Bro. It was around this time period that the two became close personal friends and HPK would even ask The Undertaker to be his final ever opponent at WrestleMania 26, which the dead man naturally accepted. Wow. The two have spoken at length in relation to the love and admiration they have for each other and it's great to see that HPK was able to conquer his demons and make some genuine friends in the wrestling industry. Yeah, because from what I know and what people have said, Sean was, a f he was an asshole. He was an asshole. He did not care. Like, he he was a true, he was a talented person. Like, you couldn't take away his talent because you knew he was very talented. And he knew he was very talented, but he was also an asshole at the same time. So, three, 
Number 4, Triple H and Goldberg. Now, Goldberg's most notable feud during his initial WWE run was with Triple H. Yep. This was a feud which failed to live up to expectations, and one of the reasons for that was that the two genuinely did not like each other. Oh. Goldberg believed that Triple H was trying to outright bury him, and Triple H had resentment towards Goldberg dating back to when Goldberg was WCW's top guy. When Goldberg departed WWE in 2004, he would state in a number of interviews of how much he despised the game and fans were of the belief that the two were never going to be on good terms. Damn. However, when Goldberg returned to WWE in 2016, fans were stunned when behind the scenes photos showed Goldberg and Triple H hugging and having a laugh. It turned out that the two had put the past behind them and the six years on from Goldberg's return, they remained good friends. Number three. And that's good to that's that's always good to see. That's always good to see. I'm gonna be honest with you. When Goldberg initially came to WWE, they didn't outside of what they did with him and The Rock, they 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 dropped the ball with him. They it, Goldberg was simple. I get it. They were doing tr evolution, and it was all about Triple H. They dropped the ball with him, bro. Cause ever since like. Once he won the World Heavyweight Championship, you're thinking, okay, they got to do something with him. He he needs to have a lengthy title reign. That didn't happen. It went right back to Triple H. It was it was really just a Triple H show around that evolution period. It was pretty much a Triple H show. So, yeah, they dropped the ball with him initially, in my opinion. And then after that, he was like, y'all, I'm leaving anyway. It, it, was, it, it, it became a mess. Quickly. Edge and Matt Hardy. This is in an infamous one right the here, genuine boy. genuine friendship between Woo. Edge and Matt Hardy was ripped apart when it was revealed that Edge had been having an affair with Hardy's <laughs> girlfriend, Lita. Hardy responded by calling both parties out online, and the WWE rival uh -huh. abruptly decided to release Hardy from his contract. Although they eventually brought him back to work with Edge, it was clear that the friendship was officially dead. Yeah. Years after the infamous real-life incident, it would be reported that both Edge and Hardy had reconciled. Mm -hmm. It's unknown how this came about, but it appeared to have taken place privately. The two have made a number of appearances together since their reconciliation, and the two would even share the same stage during the Hall of Fame induction of the Dudley Boys. Number two, The Rock and John Cena. Yep, this is another well, famous one, infamous one. In 2011, his dislike of John Cena wasn't just an on-screen trait. It was completely real. Mm -hmm. Cena had called The Rock out extensively for leaving behind WWE and not caring about the wrestling industry. This did make for a compelling storyline between the two men, and when the two collided at WrestleMania... This was a real feud. They, they, they obviously amped it up, but they legit didn't like each other. Like, if you guys remember that promo segment where John pretty much buried The Rock, he's like, because The Rock hadn't been there for a while, so he had, like, the notes on his hand. And, you know, he, he, he wasn't supposed to call that out, but he's like, you know what I'm saying? You're not The Rock anymore. You got the notes on your wrist. Like, he buried him. And reports were saying that he was, they were, he was pissed backstage, but it made for a good rivalry. Mania 28, there was a ton of heated animosity between them. During the build to the aforementioned dream match, both would take non-scripted shots at each other, and to their credit, it did make the feud even more personal. Yeah, it worked. Following their final encounter in 2013, it appeared that the resentment had turned to respect, and that respect ultimately transitioned into a genuine friendship. Over the past decade or so, the two have been keen to support each other's projects, and Cena has even publicly apologized to The Rock for past comments. Mm -hmm. Cena has even revealed that The Rock is prone to give him advice, as Cena over the past few years has hung up his jorts in favor of exploring new ventures in yep, Hollywood. The same thing. And number one, Shawn Michaels. The same thing that John was saying. He's kind of doing the same thing now. He's leaving more so for Hollywood, which there's nothing wrong with it, but it was just. Funny how things have come full circle. And this one right here, Sean and Brett, that, yeah, it made sense this was number one. Uh, I, when you think about it, I, it makes sense. It's They they legit did not like each other at all. I mean, that's heavily documented. They hated each other back then. I mean, legit. They were fighting all the time type shit. And Bret Hart. Now, the real-life hatred between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart was at a fever pitch in the 90s. The two truly loathed each other, and although the resentment ran deep, this didn't mean that the two didn't have a classic feud, as yeah. they certainly did. The matches between the two were tremendous, but they were often overshadowed by the behind-the-scenes confrontations yeah. between the two men. The Montreal Screwjob of 97 officially put an end to any mutual respect uh -huh. that still existed between the two, and Hart would depart WWE for WCW shortly after. 
But when Hart agreed to return to WWE in 2010, one of the things both men wanted to do was make peace with each other. This was thankfully achieved and since 2010, the two icons of wrestling have been on excellent terms. But they and that's good, bro. This is, this is what I like to see. And this is what I hope to see in the future between individuals, not even just in wrestling, just in life, bro. If you have an agreement or disagreement with someone, it can be solved. It can be fixed. It can be reckoned, you know, you know, rectified, you know, time does heal everything. You feel me? Uh, it heals all wounds. And it's just cool to know that these guys legit hated each other for many years. And they were able to reconcile and and fix that. So if anything, if you don't take anything from this video, just take this. You may not agree with someone, or you you may not even like someone. You don't. I'm not asking anybody to be a you know be friends, befriend someone that you don't care for or anything like that. But I will say this: you gotta learn how to forgive. And you gotta learn how to move forward. And you gotta learn how to let that hate go. Because if you don't, it will consume you. You don't want your last days on earth to be consumed with hatred. Because that's not a good way to go out, in my opinion. I'd rather be filled with, you know, content and happiness for what I left behind. And I got hatred for someone. And a lot of times, the, the hatred we have for people, it, it, it'd it be so minuscule. Or it'd be something that you can, you know, it, you can get over with in time you know you just you got to be willing to let it go you know what i'm saying so comment down below let me know man which one of these uh scenarios did you find sh the most shocking probably for me i mean i didn't uh i guess you could say i didn't know that there was like some real tension between goldberg and triple h i didn't know that or actually, the one that's probably the most surprising is the Chris Jericho in Triple H. I never knew they had beef. It's just they were so professional and their matches, for the most part, were pretty goddamn good. You would not you would think they're best buds the way they're just killing it in the ring and stuff like that. But I did not know Goldberg and Triple H had some beef. And I didn't know uh, Triple H and Chris Jericho had beef as well. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Roll to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.